Hi, I'm Leo Leung, a Senior Director of Product Management for Oracle Cloud, and today I'm going to talk about cloud economics when you're considering multiple cloud providers versus an on-prem environment. So this dotted line is your classic on-prem infrastructure acquisition curve, where you purchase a certain amount of hardware infrastructure, it depreciates over time, and then your costs are going to go down to basically just the operating costs. You've depreciated the asset. When you're purchasing that asset, typically what happens is you are purchasing for your production environment. Okay, so the, uh, the peak amount of demand that's required or that you're required to support. You're also purchasing for your non-prod instances, such as your QA test instances. Okay, because you still, at the end of the day, even if you're using virtualization, you need some underlying infrastructure to support those environments. And if you're an enterprise, you're probably also provisioning for high availability and DR. Right? So in some cases, that is multiple times what a single production environment requires. Non-prod, typically you're going to have four to eight additional uh, environments for them. And then for HADR, uh, one more on top of that, right? So a lot of infrastructure to support all these types of use cases. Now, when you look at a cloud provider, the big differences are you can address all these use cases at a lot lower cost on an ongoing basis. So first and foremost, when you, when you decide on your infrastructure, you're probably going to be provisioning not for peak because you know you can scale. You're going to be looking for some middle point. So let's say we're down at about a third. Okay, This is your steady state. You're provisioning for your average load. You're actually not pre-provisioning for non-production instances because you know you can spin those up at any time and then spin them down when you don't need them anymore. You can provision, you are provisioning for high availability in DR, but again, you can carry a lighter secondary site, for example, or carry a lighter redundancy because you know you can scale up when you need it, depending on your uh, recovery time objective. Okay, and then when you need to scale for peak, it can be an auto, auto scale, and then back down when the holiday season is over, when the last few months, uh, last few days of your uh, close, your monthly close is over, you can scale right back down, and it kind of goes like this. So some things to think about between cloud providers are that there are still very dramatic differences when you're thinking about the cost of the actual infrastructure. For example, if you think about storage costs for either normal use or for database types of uses, there can be dramatic differences between cloud providers. Some cloud providers, like Oracle, are very focused on enterprise workloads that all require block storage and performance. Others are not. Second, outbound bandwidth costs can be dramatically different. So when you think about an enterprise type of workload, and if you're thinking about very data intensive types of workloads, a lot of cloud providers are more like here, with those components uh, being much more expensive. When there are performance requirements, when there are high bandwidth requirements, so that you may actually see your curve be like this, where at peak, and maybe even at steady state, you're pretty close to what the on-prem uh, cost curve looks like. You may even surpass it during peak. And then this is a steady state going off the chart. All right? So that's cloud economics in a nutshell and some considerations. Thanks a lot for your time.